it's Tony, and here's my home gym review. Hope you like it. All right, let's start off with just the general overview and a full 360 of the space. This is a spare bedroom that has been converted into the home gym. All right, let's start off uh, just by prefacing a little bit about me. I'm a physical therapist by training, have been for many years. So some of the stuff I have is gonna be kind of unique and even specific to uh, that profession. Uh, I also have tried to outfit my home gym with garage sale finds. So I'll be quoting prices and stuff like that that seem you know ridiculously low, and I'll try to say when it was a garage sale find or not. Uh, probably about 80 to 90% of everything that I have for my equipment is from garage sales. Uh, so the first one, which is the main attraction, is basically this old school Nautilus Smith machine comboed with a high and low cable and the Apex uh, brand adjustable bench. These total pieces I got at a garage sale for $150. That is a crazy good price. Uh, and you're gonna see that is kind of uh, the way I have been doing things now. Of course, this is pre-pandemic prices. Just about everything in my collection that I have uh, is pre-pandemic. So obviously that is the case. So yeah, there's the Nautilus symbol up there. I'm not even certain. Uh, well, actually, I am certain. I actually went looking for parts for this machine, and um, I couldn't get the ones that I wanted. So the one thing that was not included uh, was the thing that makes this the reason why you get the Smith machine, which is, of course, the safety. And so I didn't have a safety, so I basically crafted and made up chains myself for the safety, so the bar will come down and uh, I'll be safe with its use. Uh, of course, you know, your chain is only as strong as the weakest point and the weakest point on here, uh, I think is this right here. And I think that's to like 80, 850 pounds or so. So there's no way that that kind of force is gonna be used on here. Uh, you see the painter's tape on there. This is so I'll know uh, which chain height to put it at for uh, various lifts, uh, like for squat, incline, decline. Um, this is a pretty much rock solid machine. Uh, there was a bit of rust on it initially that I did have to take care of, uh, but it has a high and low cable system on it, all plate loaded. Also comes with the pec deck. Um, this is not to be used for uh, hanging off of, I found that out quickly as it went with the warning sign. Um, this pad is actually store-bought. I think that was like $16. Uh, little tip, these are ankle weights. And these are one pound ankle weights. So I will use these as the lowest level change plate that you just put over here. So you put up your Olympic weights, you put that little change plate on, you don't need to buy a one pound chain, uh, one pound change weight. Uh, we'll just leave that there. Uh, next, the Apex brand adjustable bench. This thing is um, really pretty nice um, because when you're gonna do adjustment on it, the seat will adjust accordingly. So that is a little bit different than, say, ad other adjustable benches that are out on the market um, in the lower price ranges because the seat won't not, will not necessarily adjust to it. I'm gonna uh, put the camera in, into a quick edit and we'll, I'll show you. So, it goes from full decline like that, flat, all the way up to not quite 90, not quite a 90 degree position, but you see how the, this will adjust to where the uh, inclination is. So that when you're doing your decline, 
and it actually remains flat the whole way through and it's not this really um, terrible position that it'll put your spine in. It actually keeps the spine straight, which is very nice. So think, moving on to the Smith machine itself, uh, there's lots of people that shy away from Smith machines and don't like Smith machines, but if you have had a Smith machine as long as I have, and we had to get creative with it, um, this machine actually does a whole lot of different stuff. Um, to me, it kind of replaces lots of machines that you would get in a commercial gym. So it does pretty much bench press, incline ben bench press, decline bench press, squats, hack squats, zerver squats. Um, it will do a, with the right setup, a um, seated calf machine, standing calf machine, leg press machine, a um, military press machine. Uh, so it does a lot of stuff if, if you know how to use it. Uh, there's lots of different stretching items, stre stretching capabilities that you can do on it um, in terms of putting the bar up, putting your leg up for, for different type of stretches, uh, which is um, beneficial for me. Um, other things in here, of course, we got the TV. This is, I don't have any sound system in here, so I just put the television on with a Roku and go onto YouTube and get all the music that I want from there, or just have something playing on in the background. Uh, here you have my first weight plate sets, all Olympic plates. Um, now, typically, Pre-pandemic, you could get cheap weight plates. The cheapest I could get them at was 60 cents a pound at like a plate again sports. I got them at certainly less than that. I want to say like, uh, you know, I got, when I would buy plates at garage sales, I'd buy them uh, together in big packages. Uh, now, the thing that I would get them at, and the reason I'd get them at real cheap with these packages is that they would be all rusted out. So all the plates just about that I have, I have had to um, sand down, remove the rust, and put on uh, a new spray paint. Uh, I even have a video posted of me doing that. Uh, also here is another bench. This was included in one of those garage sale deals. Uh, he actually included it uh, for $5 when I bought a whole bunch of different weight plates. Um, and you think, say, well, why do you have two? Well, because this particular bench, uh, it can go lower. So when I use it, I can use it for a lat pull down machine when I set it up with the uh, Nautilus Smith machine. Back here, there is the lime green uh, or turquoise green step with the risers. And I use this typically for my calf raises and seated calf raises with use of the Smith machine. Uh, down there is a towel that used to be what I used to use uh, instead of the, um, the foam pad. I'd roll up and use that. And here are the three adjustable Olympic weight dumbbells that I have uh, with clips as well. So this is the body blade. This was a device, uh, I think it came out in the 90s, uh, used a lot in the therapy world, but not so much, uh, I don't think it really ever really caught on. Uh, the idea behind the body blade is as you move this, like that, it's creating a lot of muscle contractions in terms of stabilization, approximately. So there's distal movement, but a lot of proximal stability, and they have a set of uh, various exercises uh, to use with that. Again, more of a rehab tool, I think, than anything else. Um, you can look it up. I don't even know if these are, get, are sold commercially anymore. I haven't priced them or tried to. Um, this I got for a dollar, and it also included uh, the poster as well. Here I have a barbell. Uh, this was another one of these items that I got dirt cheap, maybe five bucks. Uh, it was all rusted out. Um, you can see how I've tried to do a little bit of re restoration on the ends of it. Um, it. It's a barbell. It doesn't matter. To me, I don't care about like the, these big brand names that people get. It, 
it, it weighs the same no matter what. It does the function of a barbell exactly the way I want it to. Um, typically, I'm using this barbell with my homemade um, landmine that you'll see in a bit. Over here, I have the two Century products, both bought at garage sales, the Wavemaster XXL, this on the left, this freestanding heavy bag, filled with water at the bottom, great cardio. Um, that I got for $50 at a garage sale, it usually goes for like 350. Uh, the Body Opponent bag, also a Century product, got him for 60. Uh, and again, this is another $350 product. I also had another um, freestanding heavy bag when I first moved in here that I have since sold. Uh, on the bottom, you see this uh, duct tape. Uh, it's basically duct tape with foam so that I can do, whoops, get in the view, low kick. Uh, otherwise, it just has this plastic rod basically that holds them up and that's not the most fun experience to kick. Uh, let's go to the other side of the Smith machine. These are more weight plates and that is so when I'm loading up the Smith machine I have the same kind of plates on one side as I do on the other so I'm always even and I don't have to go walking around the Smith machine in this small room uh, to, to load up the plates. Uh, I have the um, other weights there, smaller ones. I have a easy curl bar, Olympic size easy curl bar back here, as well as my lat pull down attachment, and a very simple yet effective PVC pipe that I use for uh, doing uh, trunk rotations and uh, warm up and stretches. Uh, back here, People always have deadlift platforms, but this is my version of a deadlift platform. This are two rubber tiles. I got, I think they were $6 each at Home Depot. And so when I do deadlifts, I do deadlifts on this with just the uh, puzzle tile uh, that I have for flooring. And, you know, don't get me wrong, you're not, these are not supposed to like stop like a high lift and then bash it down. I'm not doing that kind of lift. I'm not doing that kind of weight training um, specifically. So when I do a deadlift, it's going to be down slow and steady. So it's not supposed to be as crash uh, anyways when you do a deadlift, for, in my opinion. Um, so these work just fine as my own little deadlift platform. While I'm over here, you'll see there's different colors of the weights that I have. And I will interject and say, you know, the, when I painted these with actually house paint, latex house paint, don't do that. <laughs> don't ever, ever do that. It sticks like crazy. It doesn't work. Uh, and at some point, I do have to go back and, and basically uh, strip all the paint off of this and do it with proper spray paint. Uh, if you want to know the proper color, to, there is a um, Rust-Oleum uh, Rust-Covered uh, Coverage Spray Paint uh, Restoration that is great and that's what I did this on and uh, white paint to do the lettering on and it makes it look a lot better and it also doesn't stick and it feels correct uh, when, when gripping. These are my little Kung Fu shoes. Uh, I don't bring outside shoes into the gym for obvious re reasons because I'm doing sit-ups and laying down on the ground and such in here. So um, I'll also take my shoes off altogether when I'm uh, doing my kickboxing on the bags. So I don't typically wear any outside shoes in here. Uh, so these are the shoes I'll, I'll use if I, if I feel I need more traction with any kind of lifts. Uh, chains kind of randomly there that that's for different setups that I use uh, for example when I'm trying to do a uh, lat pull down I'll use the chains on the machine to keep it in place so that I can actually do the lat pull down on it uh, this is an attachment that I added on 
for bands, although you can attach bands just about everywhere, but also for my TRX suspension trainer that I have, which will be over in this corner, which I'll next go through. And yes, I have a fair amount of uh, dumbbells and a fairly small amount of space. So in terms of just the craziness of this, I'm probably the only one that has, that I know of, that has dumbbells that go from one pound increments from one to 10. So yes, I have a six pound dumbbell, two of them. <laughs> it makes no sense uh, to most people, but when you're in the uh, rehab world such as me, uh, yeah, like slow in, in, in improvement uh, in terms of how much weight that you're lifting uh, does work, particularly after an injury. And you might think, oh, well, you know, I'm actually, I have used these. Uh, post-injury my, for myself actually so they did get used um, I of course have other smaller dumbbells and it goes from 5 to 50 in 5 pound intervals except for this unique 12 pounder that I have in there which I don't quite know where I picked that up exactly but all I will tell you I got all of these from garage sales I, the majority of them I got in one big load, uh, I think, for fifty dollars. I don't know. I, I probably talked the person down at the time because uh, they were selling weight plates, some of the Olympic weight plates at the same time. So if you think about the the value on that, now again that was years ago. Um, I think they really just wanted to get out of the house, and it was heavy. So they, you know, I had to actually, you know, they had like one or two at the garage sale. I'm like. Uh, you know, they were trying to sell the stuff and I was like, yeah, we're selling the whole set. You got to go get it from the back. So I had to, um, they were just lazy and didn't want to bring it all out and, and carry it. So that's how I got the good deal on it. However, there was one that was not included, which is really strange, but this 30 pounder, I actually had to go and buy, um, that, that hex iron dumbbell, I had to go and buy myself. Uh, individually because it wasn't included so that was like the really the only one purchase and that that one purchase was almost the same as the price of the rest of the entire set um, the rack that I have on here I can't even remember I think I maybe paid $12 for it for the rack and it fits just perfectly in the space next to the closet um, just perfectly fine uh, these over here, which are kind of like, what is that? These are magnets. I bought these at Home Depot. And what's nice about these magnets is when you add them on, like so, on both sides, they add up to um, just, I think, under a pound. So um, it increases the versatility and the number of, um, uh, basically the number of weights that you have because now I have, you know, not just 35s, but 36s and stuff like that. So there's this very slight variation in the amount of, um, of, of weights that are available. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff behind there. And I'm gonna do a quick little edit and bring that out to show you. Okay, back there are some aerobic weights, dumbbells, as well as the four pound uh, ankle weights. Out here is the rest of the ankle weights uh, going from one half of a pound up to uh, five pounds uh, in pound or two pound in in increments. Um, Useful in the therapy world, can be useful in other training, but don't know how much people are really going to be interested in that. I also have a set of adjustable um, ankle weights elsewhere. Here's the other stuff that was behind here. This is a standard weight plate uh, triceps bar. And next, some devices that maybe are not as familiar, so two are homemade. Uh, these two right here are Indian clubs, and if you haven't uh, ever explored what Indian clubs are, I 
would strongly advise people that do any kind of weightlifting training with their arms to find out what weight, uh, what Indian clubs are and how to use them. Uh, they're very, very useful in terms of range of motion, stretching, flexibility, um, great tools. Uh, unfortunately, they're not the greatest to use in this room that I have them in because of the low ceilings. But uh, if you have higher ceilings, if you are in a, like a garage that doesn't have a lot of low hanging stuff, uh, these are great for using outdoors. Um, different positions I can get myself into that I can uh, raise them up pretty high as well. But uh, Indian clubs, they're really old school. Um, so yeah, look them up. This over here is my own handmade do-it-yourself version of the Indian club. But it also has um, standard weight plates on the end of it. So basically what this device is a threaded rod with a PVC pipe cut like this. And what it allows you to do is different wrist motion exercises. So supination and pronation, um, uh, ulnar and radial deviation, all those kinds of wrist exercises, uh, as well as it allows you to do all sorts of uh, the, the different Indian club movements as well, but with higher level re of resistance because I'm allowed to pretty much take off the ends of this, put on more standard weight plates, and can go up to a pretty high amount. Uh, also, it can be uh, a nicer way to do hammer curls as opposed to dumbbells. And over here is my adjustable weight uh, mace club, basically. Uh, there's various training uh, on, on any of the mace clubs. Um, this is probably a little bit shorter in terms of the length of a mace club, but it works for me. Um, again, it's a do-it-yourself type job. Again, th just the threaded rod, the bolts, all that's needed. And again, I'm not gonna go through the exercises that you can do with a mace club. You go ahead and find those out on your own. So yeah, all those items back there, all bought at garage sales, uh, probably a dollar or two dollars uh, for everything except for the ankle weights. The ankle weights I got as a package deal, I think for uh, 10 altogether. Um, anyways, let's look next at the wall storage over here. I have a, of course, a whiteboard for and a camera holder. That's what I was holding the camera with earlier. Um, let's see, we've got my boxing timer, adjustable gripper for grip strength, another another timer. I have, well, I should probably bring this out. Probably one of the best cardiovascular exercise tools that you can buy for the price. Simple speed jump rope. Uh, this is like the vinyl kind, really super nice. Uh, I have, again, low ceilings in here. It's, it's difficult to do, but um, if you're not going crazy with it, it works out just fine. Uh, behind the whiteboard is musculoskeletal system. I use that really just for pictures and reference and stuff like that. Uh, not really a lot big on the decorations in here. Um, let's go over the items on here. I'm gonna do another quick edit so you can see all of it, break it all up. Break all it right, let's go with what was up there on the wall. We have, starting off the boxing gloves. Uh, these are bag boxing gloves. Uh, these are, what's the brand? X3 Sports, I'm not quite certain, but I, I believe I got these gloves for a dollar. Also, I have the Everlast uh, things to put in the gloves. That's to help keep the stink down. Uh, I have uh, these Century gloves. These are Century Bag MMA gloves. These are probably the best gloves uh, I have and have owned. These are 23 years old. I mean, yeah, they've got wear and tear on them, don't get me wrong, but uh, you get what you pay for. These were, I actually bought these uh, you know, that long ago. I still use them to this day. They're simply the best uh, bag glove to use. Um, 
Also, I have, again, the anti-stink things to put in there. I don't, I, that's not like the official word for it. I can't, I don't quite remember. Um, but that's not even the stinkiest thing that'll be in the gym. The stinkiest thing that'll be in the, in the gym are the hand wraps. I have a pair of Tice My hand wraps. Uh, again, these are 20 years old. And Everlast hand wraps, uh, obviously uh, smaller makes it easier to get on. These are more for MMA, uh, these more for Muay Thai. Um, so out of everything that gets cleaned in here, these wraps get cleaned and put in the wash more than anything else. And that's also why I got two, uh, two different pair. Because uh, when one stinks, you want, to put, you want to put it in the wash right away. Uh, this is Century Open Glove. MMA glove, um, also very good. You can see the wear and tear on that. These are also 20 years old, um, so or, or thereabouts. So uh, over here with some weightlifting gloves. Um, I used to have some pretty uh, heavy. Um, when I was lifting a lot more, I'd have, I developed a lot of calluses. Uh, so that's to try to get the calluses to not be present so much. Um, some cheap band uh, hand grips. Uh, actually bought this for full price. This is uh, my weightlifting belt. This is, I don't know, for some reason this is like a superior weightlifting belt for me. There's all these other ones that are those leather belts. Um, this thing is probably also 20 years old. And... Um, I don't know, for whatever reason, it, it works really well and I've never had to buy another belt since uh, I bought it. Uh, we have some ankle attachments for the cable system. This is actually attached to the Total Gym that I have in here and I'll get to the Total Gym in the future. Another ankle strap, another ankle strap from another system. Uh, stretching belt. Weightlifting straps, cable attachments, rope cable attachments, more cable attachments, and these attachments, which are not really attachments, these are actually car parts. Uh, there was a garage sale that was the closing down of a um, mechanic. He was retiring and he was selling off everything in the garage. So this is actually a... Um, for a steering column, I believe, uh, so that when you would turn it, it would turn the, the when you turn the, the steering wheel, it turn this. Um, but what I was interested in was the fact that it had these welded onto the ends of them. So I'll take that and attach it to the cable system for uh, like simulated golf swings, uh, tennis swings, th these different kinds of motions, lumberjack type of motions. Uh, I have two different ones. One with a little bit of knurling on the bottom for a little bit better grip. Um, and again, you get, you get creative with, with your own stuff. Uh, here is the TRX system I showed earlier where, uh, where, where it attaches to. Uh, this TRX system, I believe I bought for $2. So if you've ever priced a TRX system, I think they're about $100. So that was a good garage sale buy. All right. Let's go over here to just the last part. I've got my chain with calibers to make adjustments for the length of the not, now you can hear me uh, for the length uh, on the cable system. Uh, this is a total gym handle uh, that I that I actually use. I don't use those little crappier ones, I use, I use the real deal one. Um, and I've got bands, different bands of the different heights. Uh, wrist, one pound wrist weights for running and shadow boxing. Uh, more bands and I bought basically two of each. Uh, so that I have even on both sides when I use bands. And next will come what is in the closet. And yeah, 
a whole lot of stuff in the closet. So I'm gonna go through and do a quick tour of what's in the closet and bring some stuff out to show you guys. All right, let's go over the items, some of the items from the closet. Uh, the first is the newest addition to what I have gotten at a garage sale. This was, I believe, a dollar. This is the Denise Austin torso trainer. It's basically a souped up ab wheel with a place to put your knees so you don't hurt your knees. Uh, this is a calf stretcher. It is a uh, pro stretch calf stretcher. Um, this is always very, very fun. These are my battle ropes, $6 at a garage sale. Like I said, I'm not kidding. That's a six, not a nine, okay? So when I tell you that I get things at a good price, uh, you just gotta be willing to go out there. This is my uh, Gold's Gym heavy duty um, adjustable weight vest. Another weight vest with that's lighter. This is a Gold's Gym brand balance trainer that on the bottom has an adjustable height for degrees of difficulty. Again, I'm in the physical therapy world, so that might not be a piece of training equipment people are, are knowing about. So my uh, weights only go up to 50 pounds. So from um, 55 pounds plus, I use uh, adjustable weights and these go up to safely, I feel, up to 80 pounds. If I'm going above that mark, which was not too often, that's when I'm using the adjustable Olympic uh, barbells, uh, dumbbells back there. Um, this is a piece of string, which you don't think would be a very good training tool, but when you tie it up at about a uh, head height on uh, two objects, uh, like for me, it would be up here to over here, and um, you're gonna do duck and under drills for boxing. Uh, so it has martial arts cap uh, martial arts um, application. These are sand bells. Again, I don't know how familiar people are with sand bells. Um, these are used only outside as they are beginning to leak. That is the problem with buying used equipment is it's not always that great and reliable. Um, but kind of some variable exercises to do with those. Uh, this is a Fairbrand uh, balance pad and it's vinyl, it's um, inflatable. Oh wait, it's not inflatable, it's just vinyl. Um, and again, more of a therapy product for, for balance. You stand on this and it's really wonky. Uh, next, the medicine ball collection. I have Medicine balls at two, four, eight, and 10 pounds. And then there's a 15 pound, 20, and 40 pound slam balls that I have. All of these were bought at garage sales, dirt cheap. Uh, we're talking like two to five dollars each. I think maybe the, the 40 pounder might have been six or seven, something like that. I'm, I'm usually talking people down on the prices. Uh, these two other, the 15 and 20 pound slam balls, I got those actually at Aldi at a price much lower than you could buy at Amazon. I know Aldi is a um, grocery store. It's weird that they'll be at a grocery store, but they were there and uh, good price for them. Uh, I have kettlebells, two five pounds, 15 and 20 pound and some foam rollers. And I want to talk a little bit about the foam rollers. This foam roller is super, super hard. Uh, not very comfortable, so to speak, but sometimes you don't want comfortable. You want it to be very firm. What's nice about this is it has an insert of a much smaller foam roller uh, because sometimes these big foam rollers, they don't quite fit the, um, the application that you want. Uh, for easy storage, it goes in here. And this is a different type of foam roller. This is one that is in the, in the therapy world. This is produced by a company called OPTP. T o -P -T -P. Uh, they are, you go to OPT, OPTP. Oh, that's such a tongue twister. Why does it have to be that difficult? 
www.ptherapyproducts.com. Uh, and you, there's tons of therapy products that are used typically in the outpatient physical therapy world, but anybody can buy them. So if you haven't gone through PT and you're wondering where, where they have some of these uh, recovery items and you want to buy them yourself, that was, that's, the, that's the website to go to. Of course, they're, they're expensive, but for whatever reason, I was able to get this at a garage sale, I think a dollar or two dollars. But what's very nice about this particular foam roller is it is the softest foam roller I've ever encountered. So if you can see that density of that foam, it's less. It's more of an EVA type foam uh, that's less dense and therefore um, much more comfortable to use. I don't know why they don't make more foam rollers um, in this kind of quality and a more commercial basis because I think people would be more apt to use them because they're not so um, rough, on, rough, on, rough on you when you use them. Um, this is an adjustable kettlebell. So if you I already have tons of standard weight plates, here's just some of them as you see here. Uh, you're gonna see more in the future of this video. Uh, but, um, you know, so I have up to 20 at over here, and then anything above 20 uh, goes on to here. You can't do every single kettlebell exercise with this, but your main ones of the, of the swing, single iron swings, uh, your clean and jerk and lift type maneuvers, they can all be done with this. Um, this was a gift for me, I think about in the 30 to $40 range. This particular brand uh, was bought off of Amazon. I don't think it can be found on Amazon anymore, but man, it's a godsend. Uh, there's these other devices that can be used uh, to like, convert a, a dumbbell to a kettlebell. I would recommend those. Buy these if you already have standard weight plates. Also, if you're gonna do like me and get your weights uh, at garage sales, you're gonna probably encounter the standard weight plates more than, you need, than the Olympic plates. All right, let's continue. This is a yoga mat. These are um, shin guards that I will set up on there and do uh, like split stretches on with some protection from those so that my uh, shins aren't going right into that. Uh, but they're basically their shin martial arts pads. Um, this is my attempt at making the DB2 uh, device. If you look up DB2 on YouTube, it's a dumbbell type two is basically what it is. And basically these were dumbbells that were made that uh, have the weight in the center and the handles on the outside. So basically this is my version of it. Um, usually with a five pound weights that's smaller, but just for demonstration purposes, I've just put in the 10 pound weight. Um, so uh, it basically you can do like type of like kettlebell type swings with it as well as some different type of exercises. Plus when you're exercising and doing like let's say like a curl, like this, because of where the weight is and how it's offset, it, re it requires different uh, muscle recruitment. You can even see my muscle uh, tendons popping out from that. Um, it, it's, it's an awkward type of uh, dumbbell type lift. So it, I haven't used it too, too much, but I, it was just the idea that um, it, it, is, it is kind of unique. And if you play around with it, um, it, it can get some pretty good results. Um, it's basically made with a threaded rod, bolts, washers, cut to fit uh, PVC piping, uh, and that's it. And you can add, you too can have your own set of uh, DB2 dumbbells uh, as long as you have uh, a bunch of standard weight plates laying around. Next, can't go wrong with the uh, the thigh master. Yeah, I don't even think I've ever maybe used this one once or twice. But the idea was is that a garage sale, fifty cents. Uh, just kind of added it to the pile. Uh, some yoga blocks, not really used too much, I'll be honest. Uh, this is a large low kick uh, pad for martial arts, um, pretty much just used for that purpose, and I have more than one. The other ones are up in the attic. At one point I was thinking about starting my own martial arts class, uh, free at the rec center here uh, where I live. This is um, another threaded rod. This is actually the long handle for the mace bell, as we saw uh, earlier before, my homemade mace bell. Um, this is a longer staff, um, works much better for it. This product is by Jillian Michaels. Uh, she's the personal trainer from uh, television. And this device is a multi-soft kettlebell, soft, uh, 
cut a uh, weight on a on a on a string uh, mace and a short mace device. Um, I am. It's actually pretty good. Um, it has to be inflated though, and I haven't uh, reinflated it since the last time I used it. But um, unique kind of product. I don't think it's sold in stores anymore. And this is my homemade landmine. Anyone wants to know about landmine? Here's how you make it: get scrap wood. That's what this is. You put it into a corner. This is a PVC pipe fit correctly that goes over the um, the end of a. Of a uh, a bar fill, and this part is the swivel part to a wheel with the wheel removed and this put in. And um, it, that was being thrown away at work. There's a, a, a cart that was being thrown away, it was in the dumpster, and I saw that and I'm like, huh, I can use that for something. So I grabbed it and made it into my own homemade landmine. This just goes into the corner, into any kind of corner. Uh, works perfectly fine. All right, let's bring out some more stuff and I'm give more feel tour. Completely compelled to take out everything, so we'll just do a light tour of the top row. Uh, these are kick pads um, for martial arts. A uh, comfort massaging ball that uh, is very spiky and not necessarily as comfortable as you might think. Uh, grip tape or a tennis racket that just happened to make its way in there. All sorts of videos, uh, Insanity, T25, uh, I don't know, a P90X I think is in here somewhere. Maybe there's two of them, I can't quite remember. Uh, Billy Blank stuff, Tybo type stuff. Um, this is a balance pad, um, useful in physical therapy. I'll actually probably bring these two items down so you can see them. Uh, another balance pad, uh, useful for therapy. I got tie pads, um, two shin conditioning uh, rollers, it's just straight wood rollers, uh, but, but for shin, shin conditioning for Muay Thai. Um, more kick pads. This is actually a belly pad uh, for doing knee training in Muay Thai. Um, again, not really used... Uh, on a daily basis, just when, when training Muay Thai. Uh, let's get some of this other stuff down because it's just too complicated in here. Okay, some more stuff. Let's start over here. This is the uh, Miracle Ball pregnancy method. Um, didn't have a patient that had to have this or use this, but um, read through the, the literature in here and it's all sound um, from a PT perspective. Uh, not just for pregnancy, but also for some back pain stuff. So I keep these around, again, like a dollar at a garage sale. Might as well have it on stock in case uh, I have a patient that does require it. Um, this is a massage therapy capsule. This is a soft version. I have a more firm version I'll show in a little bit. Uh, other recovery type items. These are uh, giveaway kind of foam stress ball stuff um, for very light uh, grip again therapy related items uh, also the same thing as these uh, points uh, use great on the feet also this one great for sitting down and putting your feet on uh, for uh, recovery uh, a roller for recovery this is one of the better ones that uh, I have encountered and I, and I use um, this was my do-it-yourself uh, wrist roller. I bought a commercial one, which I'll show in a bit. Um, I don't like this one because um, it's just the the other version is so much worth it to, to buy a commercial one. I actually um, feel like those are superior. But if you are in a pinch and don't have the um, don't have it available to you, this this does fine for a wrist roller. Uh, two different bags and a collection of Thayer tubing, and I have videos on my website. This is actually the most diverse. Piece of equipment. If you can't set up a home gym, this is the piece of equipment to get. Uh, it does so much in terms of resistance training. All you need is a door. Um, great for patients, great for home care work, um, which is what I am, a home care physical therapist. So the, these are, these are uh, very, very good. Um, this particular brand in, in particular, uh, I do like them, the Odaland. Um, but uh, 
you know, thirty dollars and you get a, a gym basically. If you know and have the knowledge of how to of how to use resistance bands, uh, it's they're very very good. Uh, old school chest extension, spring chest extension. I cannot emphasize how cool these are, even though they only really do one exercise. But if you're creative, you can do other exercises with it. If you have something to attach it to, uh, it, it can do uh, quite a lot of resistance um, with these, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Next, these are very questionable. You're like, what the heck is that? Well, I said there was that garage sale that I went to that was the racing uh, mechanic that was retiring. Well, these are items I had gotten off of him, and this is all for grip training. These are all custom grip training things that I made. So basically, this would be your pin uh, that you'd be putting your weight onto, which is also similar to this type of device right here. Okay, but I didn't have this at the time that I made it, so I made that. But that's basically your, your pin. Uh, and you would attach these various pinching grip uh, strength and trainer. So there's this very small sort of uh, pinching grip, like a chuck grip, very thin piece of metal. Again, as thin as you can in terms of a grip strength. This type of metal piece, again, another more uh, pinching grip, static grip, pinching, Training, same thing here, holding on like this, very, very small surface area to grip a hold of, like this, uh, holding it like, a, like you would a pen. Um, again, all these different methods of, of holding, and you just attach it, and it's just, you know, pinch and lift and grip uh, training. Uh, again, not necessarily the most functional thing you would think, but in uh, the physical therapy world, uh, I don't even see necessarily the training going into this. Um, hand therapists would be more interested in this kind of, these kinds of devices than, than anybody else. But I went and made them and I have done some training with them. Uh, has my grip really strengthened all that much? Or my pinching grip has not really, I haven't really trained to the level where I would actually um, uh, monitor it and, and, and see if there was much results. But in, in theory, um, it's very good. And now, the strange purple question mark thing, and people are like, what the heck is this? Well, this is a recovery item. Uh, it's basically, you would take this, and the knobby end would go into your back. So basically, it's a myofascial trigger release um, item. Again, um, you'll see these sometimes in recovery, in the recovery sections of various uh, sporting goods stores and stuff like that. Um, this particular model, again, at a garage sale, I think a dollar, but man, oh man, like it saved my back at one point. I was having some back spasms, got right into the, because of this end of it is, is, is a bit pointier, I was able to just get right in there, do my myofascial release, um, great device, same thing at the end, uh, more convenient knob end for, for, for uh, a myofascial release, great device. Um, I haven't seen a, a duplicate of this. I've seen similar, but this exact model, I don't quite know what it is. Again, because I, I bought it secondhand, but man, it is, it is a great device. And it's one of my first go-to things when I had back pain myself and I, and I, uh, and I want to eliminate it quickly. Okay, more stuff. So up here, the Weight Watchers punch stuff. Uh, gimmicky type thing, but I was, was really, you know, three dollars. I was really after these, which fit on like that, just for shadow boxing purposes and for running. Um, I also then later got another pair of the Everlast brand that is a little bit lighter uh, as well, again, for shadow boxing. If you're into boxing, you know all the importance of, of that. Um, you know, earlier I brought out ankle weights, these are my adjustable ankle weights, and if you're gonna purchase ankle weights. Don't bother with the other type. I do advise buying the adjustable ones uh, so that you, it's like having all those other ankle weights that I had that I had before, but without necessarily the space because you just take these weights out, good to go. Uh, great for home care physical therapists such as myself. Uh, next, grip strength 
training. These are little balls that go up in terms of uh, density and uh, resistance. This is a unique little item. This is a hand grip trainer that is specific uh, to, the, to the grip. Uh, the ball end goes in there so it fits right in with, your, with, your, with the palm of your hand. And it is specific training for the digits for flexion. And in particular, this type of device, um, great for mu musicians, particularly uh, gu guitarists, violinists, uh, flutists and stuff like that, uh, they're, they, need, they need good coordination and individual um, strengthening with it. Uh, used a lot in the, in the, in the therapy realm. Uh, this one is the higher re resistance ones, but they have it all the way from incredibly low resistance that has very little spring resistance to it to, um, to this level. Uh, great for rehab, not so great for other training, uh, unless you're really into grip training like me. Um, the Dynaflex, uh, this item is basically you put the string in, you pull it, and then you're, you're moving your wrist around. I've really not felt that it's that great of a device, but again, it was, it was cheap when I went and got it. This is my more firm um, peanut. It's by Skills, which is a um, company, I believe, that sell things at Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, this is like a foam roller, but I'll use it uh, on my back because it's basically designed so that your uh, inner vertebral processes go in here and you're basically massaging um, your spinal musculature on either side. Uh, you put this up against the wall, you put your back up against the wall with your spine in the middle here and going up and down it. Uh, great relief, great for um, neck release as well. Uh, this is just some other uh, tools for massage and point and uh, point my uh, myosophical point release if ever if you've ever done any type of massage uh you know that over time uh it's really annoying yeah this little guy too same kind of thing uh here is the band this is the most powerful band that i have it's actually very very difficult to use and um this actually was completely free to me because i was at a garage sale and the garage sale was just ending and the person was throwing the stuff out and I was like, hey, I'll take that. So um, uh, this is also good for like a kind of like a, a sissy squat setup. Uh, at some point I'll have to do a video on it and, and how it's done. Um, but this is super resistant. I mean, if you're using this in terms of helping you out to do a, um, a pull up, uh, it almost does the pull up completely for you. It's that much resistance or, and uh, assistance that it would give. Uh, here is a fairly new item. This is the uh, the actual commercial foam roller that I had bought. Um, I actually bought this not at a garage sale for once. Um, it's just so much superior to the other to the other homemade one that uh, I just had to have it, and it just makes that exercise so much easier. Uh, I showed this already. There's a pin uh, for grip strength training, for holding on to it. This strange device is another do-it-yourself item. This is specifically for martial arts. Uh, basically, it's the, one of those, uh, I think it's like the six pound bag of sand that would be uh, like a medicine ball, uh, taped up with duct tape with a, a mesh that you would get for um, putting laundry in, put that into the, into, into the mesh bag, put it plastic around it, duct tape it all up, attach a uh, string to it, and I'll hang this up, uh, you know, over on the top of the Smith machine, and uh, using it for punching, kicking, uh, specifically for um, like iron palm type training, or makiwara uh, type training, or shin conditioning in, in Wei Kai, all of these, um, this type of training, which uh, you're punching a hard object uh, to encourage um, increased bone growth and bone density growth, uh, specifically to martial arts. Um, I've done this a little bit, and I kind of like the idea of it being on the bag because there's some more give to it. So like you have your Makiwara bar, uh, items, they don't have a lot of give. It's just like a post that they stick in the ground and they punch. 
And to me, that wasn't enough give for me being such a beginner. Uh, this worked out a bit well for me because as you, as you punch or kick this, uh, it moves away. So you get some, still some of the benefit of hitting a hard object, but it's not basically killing your hands or, or, or your shins. Um, done repetitively though, boy, it, 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 it will hurt. Um, I have not done this in a while because um, I'm not competing or anything like that in martial arts at this point. Um, these are your push-up, so moving push-up bars. Uh, that brings us to probably one of the better items that are in here. These are two lacrosse balls and a, uh, I believe, a racquetball. And why is this so important to me? Because this really gives the best myofascial release uh, device that you can get, particularly the, the lacrosse ball. So basically, putting it into you, engaging the tissue, twisting, and that's going to actually help out with, 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 a, with a good release. Um, these things have saved my butt more times than I care to count uh, in terms of uh, pain relief for myself. Uh, not so easy to uh, do on a person because it is pretty intense. So it's something that it's much better to teach a patient how to do it and then they invest in their own lacrosse ball and, and do it themselves. This strange device is a Therabar by the Theraband company. I'm sorry, this particular one is by CanDo, but uh, Theraband also makes a version of this. Uh, this is one of the harder ones that they have, and basically what you, what you do with it is you're gonna hold it with two hands, okay, I have the camera down to do this, uh, and, and twist it and or bend it, because it is rather hard to bend in terms of the plast in terms of uh, of um, the, ru the 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 rubber, and um, again, good for that specific motion motion of supination and pronation, uh, wrist motions, grip strengthening, but um, not necessarily uh, the most known object out of the therapy world. This is an overhead pulley. Used again just really for therapy, uh, active assistive range of motion. If anybody has any shoulder problems, shoulder injuries, you put this is a home unit, you put it over the top of the door, and then you use the pulley with the arms to uh, one arm pulls down, the other arm is being pulled up for the one that's weaker uh, in order to develop strength. Great for um, uh, folks with stroke with hemiplegia. Uh, simple little gripper, uh, not adjustable. I like the adjustable one I showed earlier much better. These are, again, at, from that garage sale from the um, uh, mechanic. These are just aluminum boxes. And what I do with these is I'll run a chain through it and use this for grip training, for grip strength training in these different positions. And one side is, of course, bigger than the other for different size grip, grip strengthening. Uh, everybody knows an ab wheel, I don't need to explain that. Next, these things. These are more grip strength training items. They have their ropes and they have loop at the end. So you can put this as an attachment for a uh, pulley system. Or uh, what I find is really killer is you just attach these to any um, overhead um, pull up bar and just try to hang from them. And believe me, the stress on your hands trying to hold on to just bare rope like that, even for, you know, 10, 15 seconds is incredible grip strength training. Um, really gets your hands raw, um, toughens up your hands too. Um, let's move on to more stuff. Okay, the next item is this. And you are gonna ask yourself, what in the world is this. This is a very unique item. Only really somebody in therapy would even really care about this. But it does have applications in the bodybuilding world. As this is basically an item with which to support yourself to do standing external rotation. Those are either dumbbells, attachment, uh, attachments, whatever. That's what this is for. It only does this particular uh, assistance. It's all it does. Uh, but 
in terms of a rehab item, it is very, very beneficial when you're trying to get uh, somebody to do that particular motion. Uh, so I have it, and this cost me nothing because a colleague of mine uh, gave this to me. Uh, so it is definitely the weirdest and strangest piece of home gym equipment uh, that I have, and that probably is ever going to be shown on any home gym tour. So this is the most unique item. Uh, wanted to point out here while I'm in here, uh, the setup I have in here, you can see I have no mirrors up on the walls, and that's because I'm using a heavy bag. So I'm going back and forth and doing cardio and bumping into the walls and such. Uh, so that's why I just have that portable mirror right there. So if I do need to sp uh, spot anything, I just put the portable mirror in, in, in place, as well as the portable mirror can go in place because on the other side of where I would be looking is the closet. So I can't put a mirror on top of the closet unless I got mirrored uh, doors for the closet, and that's just too much. So that's why I have the little portable mirror right there. There's still more to show you, not just in this room, so uh, let me go get to the other items. Okay, some more items. Uh, these are stashed away in another room. Uh, decline ab bench, uh, $5 at a garage sale. The power press complete push-up training system. Um, fair bit of warning, this is uh, not all it claims to be in terms of, you know, you're not gonna work your back really when you're doing the push-up. Sorry, this does not work that way. Um, there are portions of uh, using this when you're doing a push-up with these push-up handles, basically you put you put them in diff into different spots, right, to do different kinds of um, push-ups uneven, different positions. Uh, there's a bunch of positions on here that are just silly and actually incorrect and can actually hurt you. Um, but for my purposes, uh, they, it does a good job of but just basically being a standard um, push-up board. Uh, I got this for, I think, five bucks, so... Um, you know, just have the push-up handles themselves is, is, is worth it. Um, these are martial arts breakable boards uh, for martial arts training. Uh, so if you didn't want to have to buy, you know, more boards for your karate training over and over and over again, uh, those are a good option. Um, I've not really spent too much time uh, working with those because, you know, uh, boards don't hit back. So... Uh, I'd rather be spending my time hitting the heavy bag than uh, hitting the boards. All right, let's go on to the next room. So that's a good thing I live by myself because I have been able to convert this extra bedroom basically into the total gym room. So this is the old school total gym. Uh, don't know if this is the first one Chuck Norris was featured on or not, but uh, do not sleep on the total gym. Uh, you know, Great item, you can do all sorts of resistive exercises with it. Um, this is a, one of the older models. Um, it's heavy duty. Uh, it's, 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 it's height, uh, it, it seem, I think it's higher than a lot of the ones that are made now, so you get more resistance. Um, it's all body weight and resistance. Uh, it's hard to steal. Um, it's a super machine. Um, I actually have two of these uh, that I bought at garage sales. The other one is just in storage, um, but this is this is this is this is primo stuff. Um, I have the other attachments. There's all sorts of attachments to it, because uh, again, I bought two machines, so I have all sorts of all all the different attachments to it. Wide variety of exercises. There's also the um, this is I might as well just show it correctly. This goes on like that for a uh, preacher curl basically onto the total gym it's a preacher curl attachment uh got swiss ball uh hyper extension machine i can pull out uh to work with so it's not this just i was running out of space of where to put stuff so that's where i put the hyper extension uh i don't have a glute ham developing machine uh haven't found one of those that's not really something that uh i'm too keen on because this does fairly similar uh job in terms of muscle recruitment so i'm fine with with, with just this at okay this point. i'm in the master bedroom and yes i do have a piece of exercise equipment in the master bedroom uh so this is like my walk-in closet over here and there's this unique weird space that you can't really use for anything at one point i just had a desk in here and that desk never got used 
Uh, so I bought this power tower at a garage sale. Uh, it was $10, I think. And the uh, pull-up uh, straps, I think those were $2. Uh, so it fits the space perfectly. When I go up to do a, a pull-up, my head just about reaches the ceiling, so this works out just perfectly. Um, yeah, kind of weird to have a piece of equipment, but definitely motivates you first thing in the morning that you need to exercise. Um, nothing else I can really say about this particular model, um, except that I don't quite like the distance apart of how far apart these are for dips. I actually do, you do perform my dips on uh, that hyperextension machine that was in the other room. So that's it for here. Let's go to the All next right. one. And so one of the benefits of living alone is that you can set up your home gym any way that you want, including any part of the home. So basically the whole home is my gym. Uh, so this is my cardio section. I have a treadmill that I'm gonna say the price that I got it for at a garage sale. Shocker, $60. That's right, an entire, entire treadmill for only $60. It was a pain to get it in here because I had to disassemble it on site and reassemble it in the home. No help from anybody, uh, but hey, it's a great deal. It is a little bit loud, but works just fine. I haven't had to replace it or add any extra parts to it or anything like that. And it's wonderful because then I can just literally do my cardio play video games, watch TV, watch YouTube on the TV at the same time. Uh, so it's great like that, not like a, a commercial gym where you have to watch whatever's on the TVs. In the commercial gym, I can put on whatever I want. Uh, next, also, I have a fit desk, which is a little bit different uh, type of um, cardio than probably I've seen on a lot of other home gyms. Uh, because I, as a home care therapist, I will sometimes just set up my laptop on top of the fit desk and I will pedal and write up my documentation on patients that day that I had uh, on this device. Uh, next to it is something that is a bit unique. This is something, well, pulse, pulse oximeter, but also those are the running shoes I only use on that treadmill and that's it, that's why they're there. It's not like I'm a pig and I keep my stuff everywhere. That's specifically so I use just those shoes on it. But this device right here, I made this, this is basically made out of foam and some leather and, well, pleather. I'll put it on here like this and I'll use that to pad it so that I can walk backwards on the treadmill because there is a lot of advantage uh, to walking uh, in reverse uh, so I don't, put the treadmill motor on, you just put that on, walk in reverse um, to get the benefits of, of walking backwards. This was originally, I made this as the pad to go over a barbell uh, for doing squats with, but of course at some point I broke down and actually bought the real one. Um, on to the final section. So this is my patio. Uh, over here I have, this is not something anybody's gonna find in any of their home gym. This is a homemade, Jiu-Jitsu, Judo, Martial Arts, uh, Target, uh, Homemade Target and uh, Grappling Dummy. Uh, if you look at see uh, Grappling Dummies, what they're for, I'll let you look at that on the internet yourself. This is, um, basic, basically it was, I, I made this before I had the body opponent bag. So I would attach this to my other heavy bag and I would use that for um, specific uh, targeting training as well as uh, trying to uh, learn some jiu-jitsu holds and submissions without having to worry about uh, hurting a partner. Uh, this is inversion table. Can't say that enough about this. Uh, great, anytime that you're doing any type of, type of squats or any type of heavy lifting, trying to decompress the spine in the opposite direction, I would always recommend. Uh, this is the crafting section. You can go to my uh, crafting section of my YouTube channel if you want. Uh, where I do all sorts of stuff. Uh, this is another one of my benches. This is the Gold's Gym bench. I had it included with, uh, it also included a squat rack at one point. Um, it's a good little bench, it does a lot. Uh, it does a preacher curl, lying hamstring curl, uh, leg extension curl, adjustable. Um, doesn't get to 90 degrees quite, but gets close. Um, 
The weight capacity is not so great on it though. I was just reading it recently. The weight capacity on, on this is not so great. Uh, this was bought pre-pandemic a long time ago. I had 150 bucks for this and the, 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 the um, poorly made squat rack machine. And this is a little doozy. This is a Dansk bench. Dansk, Danskin, I'm sorry. It's a company that makes uh, sporting uh, material. Let me do a little quick edit and we'll bring it out. Flip it down and it's a cute little bench. Um, it's, you know, kind of for beginners. The back rack here with the spiral, there was a uh, vinyl coated uh, plates that I'll show you in a moment that was included with it as well as um, some uh, a barbell and uh, dumbbell attachments that you could assemble. And But what's nice about this and why I keep it around is that it does that. It does the full 90 degree position that I like uh, for some couple of different exercises. Uh, comes out here because it goes well with this, my rack. This is a fitness creality rack. This is the cheapest one. Amazon does really well for me. Um, can't say enough about this. It's very, very safe. Uh, Coop from Garage Gym Reviews, he just, uh, I think he, he pushed off uh, something like 850 pounds uh, onto these bars and uh, if you were beneath those bars you would have been safe. Uh, it did bend the bars but it didn't break them. So I feel very confident in, in, in using this device. Uh, also has a pull-up attachment to it, and my head goes just up and rubs just up against the, ce the ceiling surface. Um, let's go over here. Weights. All of these weights, without exception, bought at garage sales, completely rusted out, all refurbished by myself so that I could use them. Uh, the rack itself that's holding up these weights, uh, they're actually what was holding up and should have been used for the 1 through 10 dumbbells, but I disassembled it and reassembled it so that I would have a place to put the standard weight plates. And over here, just more standard weight plates. Uh, you may say, why are you using standard weight plates when you have Olympic weight plates for your rack? Well, because there's so many of them and like, you know, like I'm not going to go above 300 pounds for anything for any of my lifts. Um, I'm just not into that level of strength training and, and pressure on my spine at this point in my life. So uh, this is plenty enough weight for me. Uh, back in here, I have all the other standard uh, weight uh, items that I have, including the easy curl bar, other, other bars. I have another... Uh, rusted out uh, Olympic bar back here. Uh, I have a slant board. Um, I have this attachment that was something I got uh, for free when I purchased something else at a garage sale that goes um, in a doorway. Basically it's a TRX suspension system in the middle of a doorway. Um, I, I am at some point going to do a resale on that. Uh, these are vinyl plated weights. I don't know if the the but yeah, the, the, I guess there's enough light in here, but these are vinyl weighted, vinyl um, coated weight plates uh, for um, standard size weights. These are those Dan Skin um, coated, vinyl coated plates. Uh, one pound is the lowest increments and it goes to three and five pounds. Uh, again, I got a lot of standardized weight plates. Because uh, that's what you're probably going to encounter when you're buying uh, weights at garage sales. Uh, I got these also, some more standardized weight plates uh, with the handles. Uh, this is the Yes For All. You can buy these off of Amazon. Uh, I bought these for 50 bucks. It's, um, I think, 102 pounds worth of weights. Got it at a garage sale. The guy was getting rid of them because he was going to go join the gym. A um, couple of things about my rack that I do. From the front, you can't see it, but from the other side, I have put, again, the painter's tape marked off for uh, the various levels on, uh, on, on here for uh, various heights. Uh, this is the longest standard bar that I have, and as a result, uh, it just fits 
on to the, the width of this rack. So um, I don't quite like how the weight plates would hit, so I have plenty of um, the collars. So I'll put these collars on so that the weight plates don't hit this when I'm trying to re-rack. Uh, so that's my system there. Um, and over here, a little interesting little thing. This is not what you would normally buy. This actually came off of a four-wheeled walker that was getting thrown out at one of the places I used to work. And uh, I cut it off, goes on here. It's the same kind of foam density as uh, any of your, um, your typical barbell uh, pads. So it works out really great for that purpose. This is a six pound medicine ball, BOSU ball. Um, that's pretty much it for the tour. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, follow the links for uh, my YouTube sites. And um, have any questions, comments, go ahead and give it those to me. Oh yeah, here's some bonus footage. Uh, it doesn't matter how much equipment you have or anything like that. What matters is your knowledge of exercise physiology, your knowledge of how the body works. So this is kind of a preview of uh, a lot of the exercise books and physical therapy books. Uh, if I had anyone to recommend uh, for anybody that's doing training, it's gonna be this one right here. The New Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he's not just a superstar. Uh, he actually does a pretty good job of explaining a lot of exercises in there. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in there. I will warn <laughs> that uh, exercise physiologists approved is not the best idea, so you do need to include uh, other knowledge, but it's a very good starting point. Uh, other ones to, to get would be uh, any of your, um, your uh, introduction to personal training manuals. You don't need to be a personal trainer to learn how to do it. Just read the book all the way from start to finish and you'll have a pretty good understanding of exercise physiology and what to do in the gym or your own home gym. Uh, so uh, also, of course, you can get a textbook on exercise physiology. That's also a very uh, good location to, to get knowledge from. Uh, those books are much better, I feel, than just going to um, directly to just YouTube channels. Uh, maybe with the exception of uh, the Athlean X uh, channel, uh, that's, but he's also a physical therapist, so maybe I'm a little bit slanted uh, uh, towards that uh, channel. But um, yeah, read up, know, get knowledge. Um, the knowledge is just as important, I feel, as the actual training. Uh, so hope you enjoyed and see you next time.